Well, hi everyone, this is Bob the Science Guy, and we're back for another day with the slide rule. Now, I'm going to title this episode, Working with What You Have to Get What You Want. Let's go ahead and have a look at the problem left over from last visit. Now, as you may recall from our last episode, we talked about the rule of sines, and that is that the sine A over side A equals sine B over side B equals sine C over side C. Now, as you recall, the right angle is always a capital letter C. The next largest angle will be A, and the smaller of the two angles will be B. So when you have a right triangle, you're going to have one angle that's more than 45 degrees, and you're going to have one angle that's less than 45 degrees. Now the sides are, are named with lowercase letters for the angle that's opposite them. So this is side C, side A, and side B. Now as you may recall in the last episode, I gave you the lengths of the sides of a right triangle, and I asked you to give me angle B and angle A. This time, we only have the right angle and side B and side A, and we want to know the length of side C. Unfortunately, we don't have either of these angles to set up our proportion for the rule of sines. So how do we solve this triangle? And if we look at our triangle, we have this side and we have this side. And as you recall, tangent of angle B will equal 3 over 4, which is opposite over adjacent. Now we weren't tasked with finding angle B. However, we need angle B to set up some sort of a proportion so that we could use the law of sines. But to use the law of sines, we have to have an angle and its opposing side. That'll set up the proportion. So we have to solve for either angle A or angle B. And to do that, we're going to go to the trigonometric side of the slide rule, and we're going to look to the tangent scales which are labeled with a T. Now one tip of the trade is when you're using a slide rule and you want to look at tangents, you always want to look between 5.7 degrees and 45 degrees. You don't want to look at angles that are greater than 45 degrees. So you want the larger of the two sides on the bottom. And that's how you decide which angle you're going to use, and that's why I'm looking for angle B here. So let's go to our paper and set this up. So here's our relationship for tangent B. It's going to be opposite side over adjacent side, or 3 over 4. Now we're going to divide both sides by 3, and we're going to come up with this equation. So we have tangent over 3 equals 1 over 4. This is a very simple equation for us to set up on the slide rule. Let's go ahead and do that. We're going to go ahead and set our cursor over 4 and we're going to bring the index directly over it. So there is our 1 over 4. Now if we come here to 3 and look straight up on the tangent scale, we're going to go ahead and get our tangent. And as you can see, this is 35, 36, that's 37, but we're at 36.9. Now we know that angle B equals 36.9. Now that we know this angle, we can set the sine of 36.9 directly above its corresponding side, which is 3. Let's go ahead and do that. Now to do that, we'll look on the sine scale, and we'll come to 36.9. And as you see, we're set up directly over the number 3 on the D scale. So we have the sine of angle B directly over the length of side B. Then we simply come out to the sine of 90 degrees, which is 1, and read straight down to the length of the hypotenuse, which is 5. So once again, if it's convenient for us to find one of the angles with another trigonometric function, say cosine or tangent in this case, we find that angle. And then we set the sine of that angle over its corresponding side. And then we simply read out to whatever we need. So in this case, we know the other leg of the triangle is 4 units long, and we can read straight up and read its angle, which is 53.1, or we can come down to the sine of 90 degrees, as we did, and read the length of the hypotenuse. Now one other thing that I want to point out is these red numbers on the sine scale. As you recall from our paper on high school trig on one page, we come down here to the identities, and we notice that the sine of alpha equals the cosine of 90 degrees minus alpha. 
Now, if we come out here to a sine of 40 degrees, notice that there is a red 50 to its left. That 50 degrees indicates that the sine of 40 degrees equals the cosine of 50 degrees. So the sine increases as we move from left to right. So we went from 40 to 50. And it increases as we move from right to left with a cosine. So we went from 50 to 60 degrees there. Now another nice feature that you can do with this, so if you notice the sine of your angle is 36.9, that is the cosine of 53.1, which is the complementary angle. So that is the other angle in your triangle. Now in our next episode, we're going to talk some more about tangents and cosines, and for example, why there are two tangent graphs and how you would use those. We're also going to introduce another trigonometric function. There are three additional common trigonometric functions. They're not as common as sine, cosine, and tangent, but you will hear about them and you will be using them in the future. Those will be the first three things on the second sheet of paper that I told you we had to do to get the A in trigonometry. So this is Bob the Science Guy. Follow me for more. I'll see you again soon. Take care.